So how's the practice week been? Uh, good. Uh, we've uh, shortened practice down a little bit. Uh, we went uh, first half of the period and I mean the first half of practice in pads, and then we took the pads off second, just trying to get prepared and get our work done, but try to keep them fresh with you know two games here in, the, in this uh, next week coming up. So just uh, trying to take care of the guys, and uh, but I thought the work has been spirited. It's been good. I feel like we've asked you this before during one of the games, but with a lot of rain in the forecast, do you do you do any wet ball drills and all that stuff, or is that just mythology? Well, no, you work at some, you know, and it's more just it's more your level of focus has to go up and uh, being able to handle that. But yeah, you do work some wet ball drills just to emphasize your focus. And uh, but the, other than that, you just got to go execute. The good thing is both teams have to play in the same conditions, so I think that's the you know just got to make sure you can execute and your level of focus go up. Do you anticipate having Alex Gibbons? I do. He's practiced. He was full uh, contact today and uh, practice. So he went through all the way through the protocol and was uh, was live and in full pass today. So he, uh, he'll he'll be out there. You already kind of touched on this, but like you said, that second game comes up on Thursday rather than on Saturday. Kind of changes things up as far as practice goes. Once Texas A&M is over, how do you kind of work that practice? Week? I mean, you just got to you got to do the best you can. You know, I, you can't do a whole bunch of uh, you know pads and all that. It's a lot more mental work and getting the guys back recovered, but. Uh, and again, part of it is that late in the season, you know, just trying to keep their bodies fresh through this week and, and, and next week. I think I think it all kind of, you know, marries together. But any thoughts about Tommy Tuberville coming back as an analyst? Is that going to be kind of kind of weird meeting with him as a? Um, well, I mean, you know, he he was my coach, and um, you know, I, it'll be it'll be you know kind of it'll be kind of cool to sit down with him again. We hadn't really spent a whole bunch of time together, just. Uh, you know, career paths and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, it will be uh, it will, it will be interesting to sit out with him for sure. What did you learn from playing under him? I know that was a long time ago. but No, I mean, just, um, I mean, I learned, I mean, what, what he did best was it was his staff and the staff he hired. And he was he was a really good manager. He's really good with the, with the boosters and handling all that. So I think, uh, I mean, I learned a lot from him. And, uh, you know, obviously had a great four years under him. And uh, obviously with, you know, coming through the probation my first two years, uh, obviously, it's taught me a lot on how to deal with certain things and, you know, playing for each other and your teammates. And there's a lot of correlation you can take and experiences to play through and have to now be a coach and be able to, you know, use those experiences have been, been pretty cool. You've talked a lot about Jordan not being 100% this year. But what's made him effective despite the fact that, you know, he's played hobbled, I guess? For I mean, I think it's just the, the culmination of everybody, having a veteran O-line, having good receivers, having the, the, the quarterbacks make good decisions. and. The RPOs usually you're handing the ball ball off into a good look to run the ball in, hence the you know the six yard average. So I think that just uh, just the marriage of the offense and all the, everything coming together. Um, yeah, you know, I think I think it's a bunch of different things along with him. You know, really really playing inspired football, and uh, he, he's played really well. He's caught the ball well on the backfield too. So just uh, you know, I think it's a, co a combination of a lot of things. Have y'all had a plan to limit his carries each week, or, is, or have y'all limited it at all? Uh, no, you know, I think uh, just him being. Uh, you know, not 100% is limited in some because we haven't been able to maybe get him as many as we would like. Uh, but, um, you know, I think, um, you know, he, he's got a good feel for how much he can play. If, we, if he's healthy, we want him out there. If he feels like he can go, we want him out there. Because not only um, is he running the ball good, catching the ball well, it's just some of the things that you don't see, you know, picking up blitzes. He had a big time blitz pickup on third down uh, last week. I think on the two minute drive at Kentucky, he had a big blitz pickup out there. So, you know, it's just the little things that an experience back gives you. Injury-wise, the rest of the report outside of Alex, obviously, where does the team stand? The other, the other um, good. It was good, uh, you know, see Austrian back out there. You know, Ross Donnelly's been back out there. That's been good. Um, so I just just to get a little bit of depth back in the D line should help.